Next, Arnold Press. Once again, an overrated exercise. I'm hey guys, what's going on? Megan here, back with another Taylor's video. Sorry, my voice sounds like crap. That's why I couldn't record last week. I have a little cold, so I sound like a little bitch. But anyway, Taylor's video on shoulders. If you have small shoulders, lagging shoulders, you're trying to bring them up. But you also confuse with all of the different shoulder exercises that are out there. This video is for you. You guys know my job is to simplify things, bring you back to the basics, use the Pareto principle to bring you guys all the methods that give you the biggest return on investment. So out of all these shoulder exercises here, what are the 20% that give you 80% of the results? Okay. By the way, I found this list from Men's Health. Once again, they are notorious for publishing BS articles. So let's see what they have right, what they have wrong this time. And once again, you do not need 20 shoulder exercises. When I was a beginner, I used to be overwhelmed by all of the misinformation out there. Program hopping, going from exercise to exercise. Guys, as long as you continue to program hop and switch your exercise every other fucking day, you're never going to make progress at the optimal rate, right? Because you're not giving yourself enough time to master the exercise, learn how to recruit your fibers correctly so you can progressively overload in the long run, right? So you got to, so been there, done that, right? The confusion in the fitness industry is insane every day they throw a new exercise at you a new technique at you and it's like what the hell you know and it's easy for the basics to get left behind and when it comes to shoulders you guys know i'm very biased towards shoulders because i still believe that neck shoulders and traps are the most important muscles for any male out there right shoulders are so crucial they're attractive to the opposite sex obviously they're useful for fighting they're useful for sports they're useful for aesthetics i mean any realm where men compete shoulders are key there's a reason why we evolved as a species to be impressed by people with massive shoulders that's one of the videos i'm coming up by the way which is why women and men all around the world in every culture and every ethnicity are impressed by big shoulders broad shoulders there's an evolutionary reasoning behind it but anyway let's get started with the ranking as usual, we're going to use the Team 3D Alpha tier list system. I'm about to nut S tier, fucking amazing, A tier, okay, that's average, doesn't hurt, you know, doesn't help much either. Bad and pure garbage. And you want to focus on the exercises that are in the top two tiers when building your program. And the criteria we're going to use to objectively decide if an exercise is good or bad is number one, is it simple, meaning easy to perform and has the low risk of injury right because building muscle is all about longevity it's about playing defense first before offense number two does it put most of the tension on the target muscle right we remember this tail list is for shoulders it's not for triceps it's not for abs it's mainly for shoulders so that does the exercise put most of the tension on the target muscle in this case shoulders with a bias on the medial delt right at the front delt because obviously the front delt gets bombarded with so many other pressing exercises Number three, does the exercise have a long progressive overload runway? Meaning, can you keep using the exercise after a year before maxing out the machine or the rack or whatever, right? We don't want an exercise that you can max out in a few months. Number four, does it put a maximum stretch on the muscle? You guys know HSP training for the last 10 plus years. I'm a big proponent on putting maximum stretch on the muscle, training the muscle in a lengthened position. That's what my entire HSP training program revolves around. The way to stretch an eccentric portion of the rep. And last but not least, is the exercise accessible in almost every gym? In case you're traveling, in case your gym closes, you know, you want an exercise you can find anywhere. All right. So using those criteria, let's get started. And shout out to Ryan for creating this actual tier list. All right, let's get started. Shoulder external rotation exercises. Pure garbage. Get that shit out of here, right? This is a hypertrophy list. It's about muscle growth. All right, I get it. It's good for injury prevention. It's good for, to warm up your joints and all that stuff. But again, this list is about maximizing shoulder growth, maximizing muscular hypertrophy, right? So for me, again, obviously I warm up before every exercise. Again, like I said earlier in the video, defense is everything. Longevity is everything. Reducing the risk of injury is everything, right? So I'm not saying this is a bad exercise if you're trying to warm up or if you're trying to bulletproof your shoulders, but it's horrible for hypertrophy. And plus, I prefer warming up with the exercise that I'm about to use anyway, you know. But again, you know, if you have shoulder issues, it doesn't hurt to do that. Again, next one, shoulder thoracic rotation. Again, pure garbage. God, you, you have no idea how much I hate these exercises 
that people just throw out there to confuse you. Oh, I'll do this for the, this is the biomechanically optimal exercise. Shut the fuck up, man. I can't stand these guys, right? No, you don't need to do this shitty ass exercise for shoulder hypertrophy. This article was called 22 Exercises to Build Bolder Shoulders. So don't catfish us with a bunch of mobility bullshit, right? So if you're a beginner out there, no, you can skip this shit. Right now, if you injured, that's a whole different tier list. That's a whole different video. That's a whole different topic. Right? If you were injured, these exercises would be at the top of the list. Right? If this was a tier list for mobility or injury prevention or whatever, but it's not. Next, incline bench press. Bad. Yeah, I'm gonna put it at bad. Right? It's a great exercise for the upper chest. It's a great exercise for even your flat chest. Right? You're gonna get some flat chest involvement. It's a good exercise for your front delts. Your front delts are gonna be very active on this exercise, but if I was programming a shoulder routine with an emphasis on shoulder hypertrophy, no, I would not put this on the list, right? Now, keep in mind, this is different from if I was programming a beginner's program routine where I actually want him to do a lot of combine movements because beginners don't have the, re, uh, the recovery management to be able to do a lot of different isolation movements. And yeah, I might put that out there so that he could hit his shoulders, triceps, and chest, you know, all in one exercise. But if the sole focus was huge shoulders, if somebody came to me and said, I want massive shoulders, this would not be on the fucking list. For shoulders, that is. Upper pecs, sure. This one, oh my God, this guy's a troll. Half kneeling, bottoms up kettlebell press. Lick my nuts, bro. I'm going to put this at bad once again. You know, I hate these weird ass exercises that are so far away from the basics. It's not a simple exercise. It does not put a majority of the tension on the target muscle. It does not have a long progressive overload runway. It does not put a maximum stretch on the muscle. And sure, it's accessible in most gyms, you know, but who the fuck cares? Bad. Next, lateral raise. I'm going to put it in fucking amazing category. And I'm going to explain why it's not her. But first, let's talk about why it's fucking amazing. Number one, is it safe and simple? Absolutely. You get injured doing lateral raises. Something is fucking wrong with you. Number two, does it put the majority of the tension on the target muscle? Yeah. You're going to get some upper trap involvement, but, you know, as, as you get more advanced, you'll be able to focus on using your lateral delts as opposed to your upper traps. Number three, does it have a long progressive overload runway? Absolutely. You are not going to max out lateral raises anytime soon. In fact, you're not going to max them out anytime in your career. What, well, you're going to be doing 100, 200 pound dumbbell lateral raises? It's not happening. Number four, does it put a maximum stretch? On the muscle, not really. That's the only reason why it's not. I'm about to not category, right? It's very hard to get a maximum stretch on the side delts using lateral raises with dumbbells. And last but not least, is it accessible in every gym? Absolutely. You can find dumbbells anywhere. And as always, exercises that bias the medial delt, I'm always going to give him a higher priority, right? Medial delt, posterior delt, those two, in my opinion, are way more important than the front delt. A lot of people don't know, but the real delt actually adds to your width just as much as the side delt does. But I made a video about that like over 10 years ago, so I'm not going to repeat myself. Next, seated floor lateral raise. Oh, my God. I was going to put this one. I wanted to put it at fucking amazing, but I do not like the lack of stability, the fact that you have to brace your core too much, right? You might get distracted, especially if you're a beginner. You're going to be distracted trying to keep your balance as opposed to focusing on contracting the medial delt. Right? I'm going to put that one out okay, mainly because of the lack of stability. Right. Not to mention you right, you can't go over down because you're gonna stop right here. Now of course with lateral raises, most of the tension is at the top of the movement. Right. If you're using dumbbells, so there's very little tension at the bottom. So the last thing you want to do is make it even worse. Next, the front raise. I'm gonna put it out okay. I know this exercise gets shitted on a lot. It's actually a good exercise. It hits your front delts, it hits a little bit of your side delts, depending on how you rotate your humerus, your upper arm. But I'm not gonna put it higher because as I said, if you want huge shoulders. I really want you to focus on the side delt and the rail delt, right? The posterior delt, right? The front delt is going to get plenty of volume, plenty of stimulus from almost every push and exercise out there, right? But it's not a bad exercise. It's a good exercise. It's just there's no reason to prioritize it since you're definitely going to be hitting front delts on many other movements. Obviously, if it's a person who only trains shoulders and nothing else, then yeah, I'll put it higher, but nobody's that fucking dumb. Next, the pilot can raise bad. Get that shit out of here. Come on, man. Again, I want simple exercises, right? Not this fancy shoulder tricep bullshit, right? Bad. I'm never going to explain why it's down here. Actually, fuck it, I will. No, it's not simple. I could guarantee you beginners are going to find a way to fuck this up. Two, muscle detention is not on the target muscle. Yeah, you're hitting a little bit of side down, but again, you, you're recruiting too many other muscles. 
Long progressive with a little runway, fine, I give it that. You know, it's a very hard exercise, so you're not going to max it out anytime soon. It does not put a maximum stretch on the muscle. And yeah, it's accessible, but that's pretty much all it has going for it. Bad. I will not be doing this for maximum shoulder hypertrophy. The javelin press. This motherfucker is really fucking trolling. I'm going to put it at bad. Again, I don't like complicated exercises. Why the fuck would you do this when you could just use a dumbbell or a cable or a machine? Come on, guys. You know, you're going to spend way too much energy and mental resources trying to balance the fucking long ass barbell trying to balance your core trying to no come on we want stability we want simplicity next shrugs is this guy fucking trolling pure garbage this is a shoulder tailless as much as i'm obsessed with traps and neck right so mainly the upper traps region this is a shoulder tailless this is a shoulder article according to whoever the fuck wrote it at men's health right so Stop catfishing people. I will not be doing shrugs for shoulders, right? If you're targeting the upper traps, a little bit of mid traps. If you're targeting your levator scapula, sure, right? But this is a shoulder tail list. Shrugs are not a shoulder exercise. Next, resistance bend face pull. I'm going to put it out okay, right? It hits your side delts. It hits your posterior delts. But I don't like the fact that it does not have a long progressive little runway. It's not simple for most people because a lot of people are going to fuck this exercise up, right? It does not put the majority of attention on the shoulders because a lot, if you have dominant biceps or dominant rhomboids and mid traps, they're definitely going to take tension away from the delts. So no. Next, military press. Believe it or not, I'm also going to put it out okay. You know, as much as I love the military press, whether it's with a barbell, dumbbell, whatever, as much as I love the OHP. It's not something I will program for maximum shoulder hypertrophy. Unless the person I'm working with, once again, uh, does not have uh, a lot of time in a gym, does not have a lot of, doesn't have the ability, doesn't have the recovery uh, management to do a whole bunch of exercises, and I need to come up with a program that hits many muscle groups, then yeah, that's when I'm going to program this, uh, you know, for shoulders, right? But for someone who has the time, who can manage recovery, who can handle a lot of volume, a lot of different exercises, a lot of isolation movements, there's no way I'm going to put this high on the list. Now, it's going to be in most of my programs, but again, that's because I'm picking exercises, compound movements that hit many muscle groups when I'm dealing with beginners or intermediates. But for the sake of maximizing shoulder hypertrophy, and I repeat, only shoulder hypertrophy, this is not going to be up there because, again, too much tension on your triceps, right? Your core has to be engaged. Your upper traps are kicking in, depending on the person, depending on their muscular imbalances. I'm not convinced that most of the tension will be on their shoulders. Some people use their upper traps when performing this. Some people are using their triceps too much. Some people have weak cores. I mean, no. Nah, so, so, yeah, no. Nah, I'm not putting this higher in the context of this tier list. Next, Arnold Press. Once again, an overrated exercise. I'm, I'm going to put this out okay, right? Again, it's not simple. The stability is trash. Risk of injury is high, especially if you start to go heavy, and the stretch is almost non-existent, so no. Next, half kneeling, archer roll. This guy is really fucking bored and wants to confuse everybody. No, bitch, we're not legless. We're not doing this exercise for maximum shoulder hypertrophy, so I'm going to put that at pure garbage. Yes, you're using your posterior delts, but too much rhomboids, too, many, too much mid traps, too much biceps, and for the love of fuck, it's, it's not simple. It's too far from the basics. Next, incline bench, combo L to lateral raise. This guy's naming his exercises after Transformers, after fucking Naruto Jitsus. I mean, he's looking for every way to make shit as complicated as possible. This would have been a great exercise if you just left it at incline lateral raises. But in this case, no. He's doing lateral raises, then he's doing front raises, then he's doing an L shape. Come on, dude. I'm going to put this at back. Get that shit out of here. Next, oh my God, God, guys, you do not want to see the video demonstration of this exercise. I was looking at the article like, is this guy fucking serious? Like, I thought this was a parody article, but no, these motherfuckers are that serious. Pure garbage. Get this shit out of here. I mean, it, guys, watch the video on this exercise. It's so stupid. And what's up with this guy's obsession with half kneeling shit? Anyway, next, the push press. Again, I'm going to put it out okay, right? There's too much momentum, too much upper pack. Too much quads, too much core, too much tricep, and obviously some upper trap at the top, right? So no, I'm not going to put the push press high on the list for maximum shoulder hypertrophy. Once again, that does not mean that it's a shitty exercise. It's a good exercise if you're trying to hit many muscle groups at once, or if you're short on time, or you don't have 
room on your program for a lot of isolation movements. Yeah, but other than that, it's not something that's going to put, you know, most of the tension on the shoulders. The tension is going to be too spread out across too many muscle groups. X incline, real delt, fly. I'm actually going to put that at fucking amazing. Right? Again, great exercise for the posterior delts. The only downside is it does not maximally stretch the posterior and uh, medial delts at the bottom, right? unless you go super heavy. But I absolutely love this exercise. I prefer a cable version. Now, this motherfucker, let me see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Again, catfishing motherfuckers. The article was called 22, but there's only 18 exercises. And he's missing some of the best shoulder exercises out there. How can you put this half kneeling bullshit and this fucking Neanderthal spear throw and all of this shit, this low doses X videos, Pornhub shit, but you're not going to put the, the basics, the best shoulder movements? So guys, I do you a favor and I throw a few bonus exercises that are not listed on this article. Cable lateral raises, I'm about to nut category. Reverse pack deck, I'm about to nut category. Cable reverse flies, I'm about to nut category. I mean, there's so many goaded exercises that he didn't put on this list. But like I said, guys, I'm only making these videos based on whatever is on these articles or these lists. So if you have any other list you want me to go over, any other shoulder list you want me to rank, just send it over and I'll rank it. But out of this 22 exercises, or actually 18 on this article, only two are worth doing. Think about that. Only two are worth doing. The rest are just okay to trash. Anyway, guys, hope this video helps. Once again, shout out to Ryan for making his tail list. Shout out to the volunteers who are helping in production of these videos, such as making the thumbnail and making the actual tail list. If you want me to rank any other list, I don't care what it is, muscle, testosterone, masculinity, I don't care what the topic is, you want me to rank any tail list, send it over in the Discord. Don't forget to join the Instagram. I'm a lot more active on it now. And as usual, if you want to support the channel, head over to the website and buy the ebook. All right, I'm out of here. All right, guys, don't forget to like or share the video, subscribe and hit the bell, and buy my HSP Nucleus of a Low Training Program. It's the ultimate program for maximum muscle growth. It includes full body workouts, splits, bro splits, push pull, home workouts, you name it. Also comes with a complete guide for macros, nutrition, fat loss, muscle growth, hormones, including a meal plan. It's pretty much all my 16 years of experience condensed into one fucking book. You're also going to get free copies of any future edition. So visit team3dalpha.com and you can use the 40% off coupon code Nucleus of a Lord. Or you could just buy the shit at full price. All right, guys, I'm out of here.